Toby Arayomi, the senior leader of Light London Church and CEO of a Wealth Mentor Online, is distinguished in his generation for the prophetic and apostolic mantle on his life and desires to see kings raised in the marketplace. Having pioneered over 10 fellowships in the UK and seen the birthing of several revivals throughout the world, Toby Arayomi is devoted to building the kingdom and has a burning desire to see others develop their knowledge and pursuit of the presence of God. He is the author of three books, Power of I, Forgiving God and The Trade. He is a family man, happily married to his associate pastor, Nicola Arayomi, and is the proud father of Elijah Chael Arayomi and Yana Alexis Amo Arayomi. Please make welcome the senior leader of Light London Church and CEO of Wealth Mentor Online, Pastor Toby Arayomi. Toby, there has been a rousing welcome for you, so just come straight on stage. Well, there are some things that uh, even twins can't do for themselves. So, Toby, we just welcome you. And I've told them about your third child. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you can do the rest okay, for yourself. Amen. Amen. Can we just stand to our feet? Do we have the keyboardist? And uh, I, I need to know your names. I don't, I don't like calling anyone keyboardist or drummer. But can we have you up, please? Just, just help support me just for a minute. Uh, I know we've already worshipped, um, but can we just worship for two minutes? It'll, it'll even help us get over the carbohydrates we just ate and the sleepiness. Can you just lift your hands and just... Adore God for just one minute, just one minute of focused adoration, one moment of undistracted worship, one minute. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sura bara baba sheke te te rabara mahaste. Oh, rebebe kia la la more bebe yance te rotolo prohu freye kersi astave. More bebe yance ve atalaka prosovo. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So much happens when we pray in the Spirit. The Bible says when we pray in the Spirit, we don't speak to men, but we speak to God. Come on, just one minute of focused worship, one minute of focused adoration, one minute of focused praise. Kura mamansia. Rore be babo sheki na la la marian sombre de. Rigan da la la mamo roko sheke ba ba ba. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We praise your name, Lilian Sora ba ba. Kura mamansia ndoro no mamo she. Mare can se veve me, mare can se veve me, Italian sombre vor, pari gam pari an sombre vete, Lilian sora mama hai. Oh, we worship you, kila la la baie so, mare can pari an sombre vee, rura mama ansia na la la cabro ore bebe anse. We worship you, we worship. Oh, hallelujah. He la 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 so Adonai. He la 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 monsi and la la mara. Rora papaya tandriosa. Perigan som le ire di un shemea. Oh, hallelujah. As the deer panteth for. The water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart, hallelujah, desire and I long to worship you. Alone, you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone, make my 
my spirit is. You alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands. I already feel a healing anointing. I feel a healing anointing. Even right now as we're worshiping, I can sense God is healing bones right now. Arthritis is being healed. Come on. Why don't you do what you couldn't do? God is moving right now and touching you. He's touching you. I command growths to disappear. I command cancers to die right now in the name of Jesus. I command pain to leave your body. I curse every spirit of infirmity in this atmosphere right now in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, you alone. Alone are my heart, desire, and I long to worship you. Hallelujah. If you know we serve a God of miracles, I want you to shout hallelujah as loud as your faith is. Come on. I said, if you know we serve a God of miracles, I've heard louder in a room of 100. Can we shout hallelujah? Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Isn't he awesome? Um, I want to pray and believe God to do some mighty miracles and healings. I believe there are so much... There's so much he's already doing and so much that he wants to do. I think sometimes our faith is wired that we need a word of knowledge before we believe God can heal. But there are some people who the Bible says take it by force. Amen. There are those with an anointing that says, if the Spirit of God is in this room, I am going to appropriate it by force. What belongs to me is mine. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm still waiting for them to bring my iPad with my Bible. We're still not connected. This internet thing is a real thing. Don't worry, I'll freestyle for now, and we'll see what God does. You, you may take your seat, but before you do, tell seven people seven times they're blessed. And then you can sit down. Seven people, seven times. And if you're smart, you'll say you're blessed times seven. Amen, 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 amen. Um, I want to continue a message I was speaking about. I had the privilege of speaking in Foursquare uh, uh, Four Church. Did I say that right? We had a good time, didn't we? Yes. And they're, they're here with me today. Thank you for cheering. I'll pay you later. Thank you. Um, I had a good time in, in Foursquare. Um, and uh, I want to honor God for my uncle and my auntie. I thank you so. They are literally our uncle and auntie. We're family. So I want to thank you so much for bringing me into Nigeria. I'm glad to be back home. Amen. I was actually born in Nigeria. And so it's good to be back. 
Um, and I want to believe God will do some wonderful, amazing things in your life. I actually declare this ground, breakthrough ground in Jesus' name. And I, I just decree, even as you stood on this ground, the angels of breakthrough are working on your behalf. You're going to return home to breakthrough. You're going to return home to miracles, wonders, and signs. You're going to return home and find out your children are saved, that your sons and daughters are anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm a preacher by nature, but I'm going to try and calm down and teach. It never quite works out, but I will try my hardest because I want to leave something that will impact you. Um, and um, I, I believe God, that God right now is in the business, and prophets and prophetic people are in the business of journeying with people through their prophetic word. I don't believe anymore that we're in the place where we can give you a word and run away. Especially if you're like me and you have to pastor while prophesying at the same time. I don't have the privilege of going home and hiding from my congregation. They call me in the middle of the night. You know that prophetic word you gave me? How is this thing going to happen? And I believe that God is... God is uh, working through us prophetically, not just to bring the word of knowledge and the word of prophecy, but to bring the words of wisdom that move us from one level to another. And so the message I started in Foursquare is a message that I might reiterate and, and I want to take it to another level. The message is literally called Level Up. Now look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you knew who you were sitting next to, you would take me out to dinner tonight. Now make sure you hold them to it. Make sure you take your order. Give them what you want. Um, I, I, I want to speak a message that God's put in my spirit called level up. And it's, it's, a, it's a message in heaven in, in, in terms of height or levels of height we measure in feet, feet. In terms of levels of water we measure it in liters. In terms of, uh, of distance or levels of distance we measure it in miles. But in heaven levels are measured by glory. And so the scripture says they go from glory to to glory, each one of them that appears before God in Zion. We go from glory to glory. That's why I can boldly prophesy to you that you're going to a new glory. I can boldly prophesy to you that there is an angel standing where you used to stand and say, why have you come searching for them here? They have risen. They've gone to a new dimension. They've gone to a new place. You've gone to a new glory. Why? Because ministers have ministered to out of their realm realm of glory. Therefore, if a minister comes and you receive it, you have access to a new height in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so I want to deal with you in terms of the word glory uh, very quickly. And I might mix and match my messages today. We might end up with a casserole by the time we're done. But I hope that it all works out and I get to land the plane. But the, the word glory is very important to me, especially from Proverbs 25 verse 2. Now I'm going to rush through a few scriptures, but trust me, they're there. Proverbs 25 verse 2, it says, it is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing. But it is the glory of kings to search the matter out. In this room, I am not sitting with church attendees. I'm actually in a room full of kings. I'm in a room full of majesty. I know you're sitting on a plastic chair, but let's pretend for a moment it's a throne. And each one of us are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But the Bible says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. I'll paraphrase it like this so you understand it. God's glory is hidden. Say that out loud. Why is God's glory hidden? Because anything that's precious is hidden. You don't find diamonds on the ground. Otherwise, it wouldn't be precious. You don't find oil just outside there. Otherwise, it would not be precious. Everything that is precious is hidden. And it just so happens that God's glory is the most precious commodity in all of heaven. 
and God's glory is hidden. Oftentimes, actually, when we see in the book of Exodus or Chronicles, we see the cloud of, we see the cloud, what they call the Shekinah of God, show up. We think that that's the glory. But actually, the Bible says God hides himself in the cloud. So the cloud is not the glory. The cloud is simply protecting you from the glory that you're not ready for. But it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. But it's the glory of kings. What does this mean? Your glory is determined by searching out God's glory. You don't go to a new dimension of glory without God. God has so wired this thing that it does not work without Him. And I'm speaking to you prophetically because I want to prophesy to you that you might have outgrown this level of glory that you're in right now. I've seen a travesty in the church. I've seen Christians swimming in the paddling pool, swimming in the baby pool, like it's the deep end. We're not yet in the deep of God. The deep of God, remember, as, as Ezekiel was moving out from the temple, the water was measuring to his ankles. And me and my twin brother used to play a game when we were much younger. It was, it was a, 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 a swimming race. I never know why I play against my brother because he always cheats anyway. But we were playing this swimming game, and it was our job. The assignment was to run from one side of the swimming pool all the way to the other side. And you know, when you start at this side, it's shallow. When you get to the other side, it gets deeper. So we started at this side, and this is how you run when you're running in shallow water. You ready? Have you ever been to the, to the beach and you try to run in the water? You have to. But as it gets deeper and it gets to your knees now, and it gets even deeper, what happens is we, you start having to really swim in it. And, and what we realize is actually the deeper you get in the water, the less of your will will remain. This is why some people don't want to go to the next level of glory. Because to get there, it requires your death. Can I keep going? But in the... Uh, um, but in the... In the In the Old Testament, I want you to get this understanding. The word glory is the word kabod. Now, I'm not going to get to teach the full message. What I've actually done, uh, before I came here, I got my my pastoral team to get my best messages. I said, choose my best 20 and my best 40 messages and put it on a USB stick so I can bring them to Nigeria. We only have about 100 here, and there's a lot more than 100 here. So you get to go to the back and grab a whole load of those. They're in boxes called Toby Arimi Ministries, and you you can grab those. But I'll touch on some aspects of it right now. The Bible says that we go from glory to glory. In the Old Testament, the word glory means weight, splendor, majesty. It's the word kabod. It literally means the undue influence of God upon a man. It's the weight of God upon you. In fact, the first time the word glory was mentioned in Scripture, it was used in reference to Abraham's wealth. How much money he had, how much wealth he had. It talked about his camels and his silk and his fur and different and his houses, his real estate. And he was talking about the glory of Abraham when it discussed that the weight or the influence of Abraham. Now, in the New Testament, the term glory takes on a, a richer meaning. It's the Greek word doxa. Someone shout dogza. Doxa is the word from which we get, and I saw a few of you guys wearing it on their t-shirts, doxa. is from the word, in theological studies, they study doxology. Doxology literally means this, doxa. It means, doxology means the study of opinions. So in the New Testament, 
the word glory literally means this, or doxa literally means this, the opinion concerning a matter. Can I play with this for a moment? So in Exodus chapter 3, I'm going to run up and down the Bible. Exodus chapter 3, God meets Moses in a burning bush. Moses and God are having this dialogue. Moses is explaining to God why God can't use him. And then Moses tries to get God in a bit of a trap. He wants to understand God. He wants to contain God. He wants a God that he can manage because that's what religion does. And he says, who shall I say has sent me? Sometimes we might say that just in case you don't do what you said you'll do. Who shall I say is the one to blame? And God said this, I am that I am. I'll be who I'll be. Can you imagine having a conversation with God and saying, God, who is going to go with me? What's your name? I haven't even met you. And God doesn't respond with, my name is James, or my name is Joshua, or my name is Adam. God responds like this, I am who I am. I'll be who I'll be. Don't you limit me by your understanding or your experience, your history. Don't limit me. I am that I am. I'll be who I'll be. So we journey to the New Testament and something amazing happens over here in the New Testament. Jesus, the Bible says he had a friend called Lazarus. Now, we sing this song. How many of you have sung this song? I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Are you going to leave me to sing it by myself? I am a friend of God. The Bible says, now I want to show you how Jesus treats his friends. You probably might sing that song a little bit slower next time. Because the Bible says Jesus loved Lazarus, for Lazarus was his friend. And Jesus heard Lazarus was dying, so he waited. Should we sing it again? I am a friend. Oh, it, it got weak in here. I am a friend. No, no, you're not singing like you sang it before. You were singing it with chest. Jesus heard Lazarus was dying. So he waited. You're my friend, Jesus, but you hear I'm dying. And you're waiting. Jesus, the debt collectors are coming and they're knocking at my door. I'm praying. I'm sowing my seed. I'm tithing. But you're waiting. Jesus, my, my, my mom has cancer. We've been praying. Pastor's prayed. Gio has prayed. Everybody's prayed. But, but you're waiting. Jesus, I'm believing you to take me to the nations. When's it happening? But you're waiting. But God, I thought I was your friend. I'll show you how God treats his friend. He says this, because you're my friend Lazarus, this sickness is not unto death. It's come for the glory of God. Some of you don't understand. Your waiting season has come for the glory of God. God's going to get glory out of your situation. And what do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? You know, it's not yet time to shout. Don't worry, you'll get your chance. So he hears his friend is dying. And he waits. Waiting for what? News suddenly comes. Don't trouble him anymore. Lazarus is dead. So he waits till he's deader and deadest. Precisely, the Bible says, he waited four days after hearing Lazarus had died. Why? Because this sickness is not unto death. It's come for the glory. It's come for a new opinion about God. Because until that day, it was believed in Hebraic custom 
that if you had died for three days, your soul was sealed forever in heaven or hell. No one can raise you after three days. So Jesus, this is why he said, I am that I am. Because humanity, you have, a, you have a propensity to form a religion around what God did so you can contextualize God in a way you understand him. But God is about to break some of your own records. I don't know what opinion they had about you. Maybe, maybe they said no one in your family ever graduates. God's about to change the opinion. Maybe they said nobody has ever had money in your lineage. God's about to change the opinion. Maybe they said cancer runs through your home. God is about to change the opinion concerning you. So God, why do you allow this to happen? Why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Because when he got to the tomb of Lazarus, there was a great crowd around. Why? Why is God waiting? I'll tell you why he's waiting. God is waiting for the crowd. Because he said, when I do this, I am preparing a table for you. But you won't eat alone. I want your enemies. I want those who said you would never make it. I want those who said you'll never rise from this fall. I want them to see the table that I prepare in your presence. So he waits. When he gets to the tomb, oh man. He continues the conversation that God started in Exodus chapter 3. In Exodus chapter 3, he said, I am that I am. Imagine God giving you a blank check. And here comes Jesus to fill in the other side of that check. And he says, I am <laughs> the resurrection. He's coming with a new opinion. See, some of you right now are hearing things in heaven and you think you've lost your mind. God is allowing you to hear conversations at a higher level of glory than you currently are at. It was like Isaiah in the sixth chapter. He saw God above the firmament. He overheard a conversation. Who shall go for us? Some of you are hearing conversations at a higher level of glory than your current experience. Huh, some of you are hearing God talk to you about being a billionaire. Oh, not, not in this room? Okay, I, I, thought, I thought they were here. Some of you are hearing conversations. God saying, I'm raising you to save the lost. I'm raising you to go to the nations. I'm raising you. I'm raising you. Some of you are hearing conversations that you'll fly on planes around the world, but you're like, God, me from my village. Who? Who in my village? Who has ever flown? Me? You're hearing conversations above your current level of glory. Why? Because God is calling you up. Every now and again, my phone, how many have iPhones in here? The rest of you will deliver you after the service. But if you've got an iPhone, every now and again, my phone sends me a message. And the message it sends me is it says it's time to upgrade. And I hate that message because I'm a, bit, I'm a bit of a maverick, I'm a bit of a rebel. I don't like being told what to do, especially by my phone. So many times I ignore the message. I just, have you ever done it? You just close it. And it keeps reminding you. You're on Instagram. Pop, there it goes. Upgrade. And then after a while, certain things stop working on your phone. Because old software can function on new upgrades. There are certain ways you're doing things that God said, i got so much new wine for you right now. But if I pour it into your current wine skin, phew, 
And here it comes saying, I am the resurrection. I'm the life. Anyone who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. And he's met with opinions. Opinion number one is, Jesus, if you had only been here earlier. He looks at Mary. I think he says this. I just said I am, not I been. And then someone else comes and says, Jesus, we know in the future you're right. He said, no, no, you don't get it. I am right now. Then he says this very powerful statement. Something that all of you are going to need to do if you're going to go to the next level of glory. I'll tell you something. It's going to hurt you badly to go to this next level of glory because you spent a long time putting this thing there and God wants you to remove it. Jesus stands in front of the tomb of Lazarus and he says, hey, roll the stone. Some of you have got some heavy stones. You've got some rooted beliefs that God doesn't heal. He might heal through that person, but God doesn't heal through me. He might bless my neighbor, but God won't bless me. He might touch this person or that person, but not me. God doesn't want to prosper us finer. God wants us to be poor so we can stay humble. You have some deep rooted stones and you put your stones there because hope hurts. When God speaks to me the first time and he says, son, I'm going to bless you. Years ago, and I, and I understood the, the last message we heard. Because when God speaks to you prophetically a lot, he spoke to me about the nations and the world and all that was going to happen. And actually, I, I validate that theology. The very opposite happens. He spoke to me about prosperity. And every time I put my card in my ATM, it said, broke. He spoke to me about healing the nations, but every single time I was sick in my body. And the devil would say, you, physician, at least heal yourself first. I built such deep stones. Why? Because hope hurts. After a while, you start telling God, God, look, I don't take a check anymore. Give me cash. Hope hurts. This is why we build religion. Because this man on the pulpit is traumatizing us with faith. He keeps telling us to believe. Hold on a little long. It's going to get better. The weeping in Jerusalem. My night has been going on for a long time, sir. So while you're preaching, your congregation are putting stones in front of their hearts. And they say, no, we can't roll the stone away. Because now, now it's so dead. Woo. It stinks. And yet Jesus says, look, this thing isn't on to death. It's come for a new opinion concerning God. I'm telling you now prophetically, God is going to change the opinion of man concerning you. He, he allowed them to talk about you for a season. He had to prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. He had to allow a young boy called Toby or Imi's teachers to tell him that he was no good and he should just be a dustbin man. He allowed doctors to say, I'll always deal with this sickness all my life. He allowed people to tell me, stop dreaming, go get a job. Why think about business? He allowed people to tell me, don't do ministry. Ministry is a hobby. Why would you throw your life away? He allowed it to happen. Why? He wanted a new opinion to fill the earth about who he is. And God is placing a glory on us. God is placing a glory on Nigeria. And Nigeria shall be known for a new thing, says the Lord. And Nigeria shall be known as a, as a land of innovation and technological advancement. And great technology. 
technology and AI shall come through this land. And the Lord says, no longer will the economy rise and fall on oil. But the Lord says, now is the time to sit down and diversify that which you do. And the Lord says, I am indeed raising up that crisis generation, says the Lord. And the Lord says, they are the musicians and the artisans and the entertainment moguls, the vloggers and the bloggers and the writers and the authors. And the Lord says, Lazarus, rise! It's time for your dreams to come out of the tomb. How's he going to do it? How's he going to do it? Let me land this plane now. I started this in Foursquare, but I'm going to hopefully get the chance to finish this. How's he going to do it? Hebrews 11 says this. It says, Faith. No, actually, it starts like this. Now faith is. And I know we've misappropriated faith. We've taught faith in many different ways. And, but God's going to ask you to dust off this old machine called faith. You're going to bring your faith back out. I want to prophesy to some of you who have been saying for a long time, I want you to stand up. If you've been saying for a long time you are weary or you are tired, if you've been sensing weariness and tiredness, I want to break that off of you. Yes, stand up, stand up. If you've been facing that weariness or tiredness, I want to break that off of you. I want to prophesy to you that perhaps actually you are not weary. Perhaps your faith is. And so Father, right now, I speak a reinforcement of faith. I speak a re-energizing. The Bible says we have the spirit of faith. We believe, therefore we speak. So Father, I release the spirit of faith that like their dad, they would open up their mouth and proclaim the glory of God. You may be seated. This is, this is a powerful thing that happened. Can you imagine Jesus walking with his disciples? And as he's walking with them, they're just talking. And he just gets fed up and he's like, hey, hey, hold on one second. Who do you say that I am? What's he looking for? Opinions. I want to tell you something. Your opinion in this season matters. If you believe you'll fail, you will. Because the Bible says, as he thinketh, so is he. If you believe you'll win, you will. If you believe you're weak, you'll be weak. If you believe you're strong, you'll be strong. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am. And here, Jesus is. With his disciples, says, who do you say I am? They said, you're this or that. Peter is searching out the glory of God. And Jesus can see Peter has got something. So Jesus looks at Peter. He says, hey, hey, Peter, who do you say I am? Peter says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looked back at Peter. Proverbs 25, 2. It is the glory of God, but it is the glory of kings. See that? You get glorified as you glorify. This is the power of worship. In worship, we get to express our opinion about God. And as we express that opinion about God, both the one who we're lifting and the one, and the one lifting are being lifted at the same time. What matters to God now is this, faith. Now, faith is the substance. Someone say substance. Of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things we don't with our physical eyes. Another translation says, faith perceives as reality what has not been revealed to the senses. Another translation says, faith is the confident expectation that what I hope for will come to pass. But I like the King James Version that says, faith is the substance. It's the closest to the Greek. Because the word substance is the Greek word hypostasis. And it literally means this, faith is, what does sub mean? Sub, sub, way, 
subordinate. I can't hear all of you. Are the carbohydrates kicking in? Faith is substance. Sub is what stance mean? Faith is the understanding of what I hope for. It's the evidence of what I don't see. Okay. I'll prove it. A woman with an issue of blood sees Jesus and she says this. She crawls through the crowd. She says, if I can touch, where? Notice she didn't say his shoulder. She didn't say his hair. She said, if I can touch his finger. She said, if I can touch of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Why the hell? Because in Jewish culture, they wear something called a talith. And the talith has a hem on it with something called a zitzit. The zitzit is also known as the wings. She realized the scripture that says, For you, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. And she said, if I can touch the wing of his garment, I know I'll be here. Great faith is actually great understanding. Oh, you say, prove it. I'll prove it again. A Roman centurion comes to Jesus and says, Hey, Jesus, my servant at home is dying. Jesus said, Okay, let's go. He says, No, I understand something. <laughs> I am a man in authority, and I am also subject to authority. I say to one, Go and go, come and go. He's saying, I understand the angelic realm and the invisible that's operating around you. If you speak, an angel will move at the speed of light and answer what you say. Jesus said, great faith. What was it? Great under. You want me to prove it one more time? <laughs> so here is uh, a woman who comes to Jesus. Her daughter is at home, demon possessed. And she said, oh Jesus, would you please? And even the disciples are going, shh. And Jesus finally turns around and says, is it right to give the children's bread to a dog? <laughs> she said, but I get something. I have dogs at home. And when we eat around the table, the dogs feel like children too. So they come around the table and they open up their mouths and whatever falls off the table, they eat. If I'm a dog, I'll eat the crumbs. And Jesus goes, great is your Because you want to go to a new level of glory. When we climb these stairs, I am standing. Something is under me and I am standing on it. When I get to the next level, I have understanding. When I get to the next level, I have, this is why I can stand. Because something is girding me under. There are certain things you get to understand in God. That faith becomes the response of your understanding. That's not where I wanted to deal with today. I wanted to deal with the other side of faith. Faith is the understanding of what I hope for. There's no point in understanding without hope. I hear Nigerians talk to me all the time, ah, Nigeria. Hey, corruption. Oh, everybody, this country is going to hell. hear it all the time. You didn't think I could do an accent, could, did you? But see, my mom, she was bringing me and my brother up. Oh, she, she brought us up. I said to my mom once, I said, look, mom, ch chill out, mom. This is England. We don't do all that African stuff. My mom pressed my head against the window. Boom! She said, out there is England. In here, this is Africa. I was born up in Africa, don't worry. Faith is the understanding of what I hope for. 
So when the devil is trying to crush you, it's not in your understanding because understanding will follow hope. Satan is trying to kill your hope. That's why, church, you've got to walk by faith, not by sight. You've got to dream this nation's reality. You've got to see things from God's perspective. I'll tell you a story that exemplifies it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll pray for you and get out of your way. When me and my twin brother, when we were in high school, we met a young man. And we, we told the story last night. This young man hated God. He was gay and he hates Christians. So he had a few problems with me and my brother. So we go on a trip. This was when we were in school and we were learning to hear the voice of God. We go on a school trip and one of the most important things in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God has three core values. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And we learned very early on that God wanted us to prioritize the love of God. See, all this demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit are powerful. But the gifts of the Spirit were never given to us to prove, that God, to the, to, to prove to the world that God exists. The Bible says the fool says there's no God. The gifts of the Spirit were given to us to prove that God is love. That's why it was given. It wasn't given so we would parade around our churches with words of knowledge like it's a deep issue that we know how to hear the voice of God. So the church go, oh, and so that men of God would become gods of men. It was given to us to demonstrate to humanity that God loves. When I was in Hungary, we traveled to speak to Hungary, and there were thousands of people in Hungary, and I was releasing the miracles and releasing the healing of God. And as we were releasing it, the camera, like a screen here, zoomed in, and I saw a couple, and they were arguing. The woman was crying, and the man was arguing, saying, No, you can't. No, you can't. And I was wondering what was going on. She was telling him, I can hear now. And she had tears in her eyes. And he said, no, you can't. You were born deaf. You can't hear. You can't hear. They came up the next day and said, she was deaf, born that way. Now she can hear. That was given not to go, God exists. But it would show the glory of God. It would show the opinion of God toward Who has sinned that this man is born like this? It hasn't happened because anyone sinned. It happened because God wants glory. God wants glory. Are you telling me our problems are because God wants glory? Absolutely. Our problems are working in us a far greater weight. So we sat with this guy. We, we, we prayed for him, everything. Nothing was working. Then one day, opportunity came. And if you pray for people long enough, you'll know when opportunity comes for the gospel. And we were praying for him, and all of a sudden, the young man just goes, I, I don't have any food. And all of his friends were like, they didn't want to be around him because apparently you can catch homosexuality. I don't know. So they were like, no, no, don't touch him, he's gay, and all this stuff. And we said, no, we're going to sit on the same table with him. We sat down with him, we were talking to him. He looked like, what the heck are you doing? And he was nice to us for the moment. He said, I don't have money for food. And God said to us, I'm a God of more than enough. Give him more than he needs. We went to the bank account, we withdrew 100 pounds, way more than it cost for McDonald's, I promise you. Gave it to him and he's just like, why would you do this? He said, because God loves you. He said, well, I still hate your God. Put it in his pocket. God is McDonald's. Next day he was back to his racist jokes, calling us the N-word and all this stuff. And we would just laugh and smile at him. Because when you pray for people, God will give you fruit for them. And we were running revival meetings, every evening revival meetings. But let me tell you something, God wants you to have so much dreams that they're not just for you, they're for others around you. God wants you to have dreams for your children, dreams for your nation. He wants you so rich in dreams. That's why I said old men will dream dreams. 
so rich in dreams that your dreams don't just incorporate you, Joseph, but they incorporate your entire family. So we dreamed of a young man turned around for Jesus Christ, an ex-homosexual who was routing homosexuals out of the kingdom of hell. We said to him, hey, come to our meeting tonight. We have a meeting. He goes, I won't be found dead in your meeting. So we went to pray and said, God, if you've got to kill him, bring him tonight. And we were praying in the Holy Ghost, hard and heavy. The meeting starts, there's a drum, keyboard, everything's playing. And here comes this young man into the meeting. And he looked at me and my brother. He said, I've come to prove that your God is dead. We said, come. We said, can we pray for you? He said, yeah, yeah, go for it. Just do whatever. We put our hand on his head. He didn't even know when he was on the ground. And he's there under the power of God for like 10, 20 minutes. And we just left him. I mean the color left his face. He's just on the floor. He opens his eyes like, how did I get on the floor? And he jumps up. He said, I just had a vision of a man who called himself Jesus. And he said, speak to these two and they'll lead you to me. Toby and Toby, would you lead me to Jesus? We didn't try and change him. We weren't trying to transform him. All he needs to do, see, Christianity is not a religion. It's a person. It's a person. And if it's churches, we'll spend more time bringing people to the person instead of our church. If we'll spend more time instead of handing out leaflets, demonstrating the person. Lives would be transformed. He jumps up, gives his life to Christ, gets delivered. The outcome we were expecting was the whole school would be saved, but persecution rose up like crazy. How dare they change a homosexual? But along with the persecution, the revival started to break out and swell and spread. Persecution's good. Oh, it's good. It's, it's, it's meat for the soul. Oh, it's so nice to be hated. It's so dull to be liked by everybody. God wants to give you dreams for your nation. I prophesy to each and every one of you standing here, sitting here, if you want this word, I prophesy to you that you will hear conversations in heaven that you never heard before. I prophesy to you, you're going to hear things at altitudes. Like John the Revelator when Jesus said, come up higher. I prophesy to you that after today you're going to hear the voice of God. I speak to your spiritual hearing to become unstuck right now. I activate the gifts of the Spirit in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus. I activate the prophetic. I activate hearing the voice of God in a new and unique way. I command your eyes to open in the realm of the Spirit. I pray the same prayer Elijah prayed over his servant. God, open his eyes to behold. Open their eyes to see more be with them than they that be with the enemy. Ho! Oh. I want to very quickly pray for you. If you're in this room today and you don't even know Jesus, you're not born again. You don't even know him. You've come to this conference. Maybe you felt like your mom dragged you here or your dad dragged you here. Listen, we're going to encourage them with a clap, so please stay standing. We do this in our church. We encourage those who come to the Lord with a clap. It, please stay standing for them. Uh, if you're in this room and you don't know Jesus, but you want to know him personally. One of the greatest miracles is when somebody comes to the Lord. All the money poured into this event will be worth it when souls come to the Lord. If you're in this room and you don't know Jesus personally, but you want to know him. Can you come forward? Just come. I want you to come. We want to pray for you. I want you to come. I want you to come. Even if you're the only one, I want you to come. We want to pray for you. I want you to come out of your seat wherever you are so we can pray for you. You don't know Jesus personally as your Lord and your Savior. I want to pray for you today. Come on, clap for them if they're coming. We want to encourage you. You don't know Jesus personally, but you want to know him. 
You want to know him. I want you to stand with my brother here at the front and just face the altar. You want to know Jesus personally. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you to know him. Listen. This is the beginning of a great journey. It's not the end. The cross is not the means to heaven. The cross is the means through which heaven comes to earth. And God wants to bring heaven into your life. If you're here, if you're here and you you want to know him, or maybe you even walked away from him, maybe you're stuck in some bondage, there's grace here. There's grace and there's glory here to change your story. There's grace and there's glory. If you're here and you don't know him, but you want to know him, I just feel like there's about three more. Come on, just come out of your seat. We're encouraging you. We're praying you through. We're your brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we're praying you through. Come on. I hope while you're clapping, you're praying. Because we're birthing souls. If you're here and you don't know Jesus personally, personally, I want you to come and join them. Come and join them. Come and join them. Amen. If you're still in your seats, just stretch your hands towards them at the front. And if you would, just lift your hands if you're at the front. It's a sign of surrender. That's all it is. When a baby wants you to carry them, they lift their hands. It's a sign of surrender. I want you to just ask Jesus right now to come into your life. Ask him to come into your heart. Just ask him. That's all. The Bible says if you believe with your mouth and speak with your heart that Jesus is Lord. And sometimes we get people to repeat prayers that we're saying. But I want you to speak from your heart to the Lord right now. There is one prayer of the sinner that God hears and that's the cry for help. It's the cry for salvation. And the Bible says all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. Yeah, just ask him. Come into my heart transform my life be my Lord and my Savior I give you me change my story in Jesus mighty name amen amen I don't know who's here who can speak with them and and take them over here if you just walk over to the side there's some prayer counselors who just want to pray with you and get you filled with the Holy Spirit and touch Now, very quickly, I'm going to pray for healings. Just lift your hands real fast, real fast. I'm going to pray for healings. I'm going to give words of knowledge just real quick, and I want you to catch it fast. And part of how you catch a miracle real quick is an act of faith. If I call out something in the knees, I want you to get out your seat and start moving. I actually noticed that the, the miracles and healings are equivalent to the acts of faith. If you got something wrong with your wrist and I pray for it, I want you to wriggle it out. Something with your back, I want you to test it out. If you got a lump somewhere, I want you to go to the bathroom and check it out and see if God's done something. We won't have time for testimonies, I don't think, today, but I want to pray for healing. Jesus is quick. He can do it. Lift your hands. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I believe you're the healer. I believe you're the deliverer. I believe you're the savior. I believe, Father, that you are the Son of God. You died for us on the cross. Jesus, this is my opinion about you, that you're the healer. You took all sickness, all disease, all means all. That means there's nothing impossible for you. As the Holy Spirit, I ask right now, move through this audience. Move through these pews. Move through these seats. Move by your power. Move by your glory. Right now, I just sense that the Holy Spirit is delivering a young woman from trauma. And it's like the trauma of rape. And it's like a a, a family member trauma. And Father, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I break off trauma in Jesus' name. I command that spirit that's been attached to you to loose you right now and let you go in Jesus' name name. I, I'm hearing arthritis right now in the knees. If that's you, arthritis in the knees. Father, I decree the healing power of God through knees in the name of Jesus. I speak to backs and back pains. I speak to severe migraine headaches in the name of Jesus. I command you to go. I see like scoliosis and there was once when we were in a meeting and God popped out somebody's back that has scoliosis. So Father, right now we speak to the twisting of the spine. We speak to every spirit that would bend the spine. We command you be loose right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to a deafness like in the right ear. 
in the right ear. I command ears to pop open right now in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to fibroids, fibroids. In fact, if you're believing God for a child and you haven't been able to have one, wave your hand. Wave your hand. You're believing God for children. Wave your hand so I can see it. I see hands. Father, right now, I speak even into fertility. In the name of Jesus, I decree by the miraculous hand of God, the Father, they will mark this day in their calendars that you release healing and miracles and testimonies. Father, I pray for children. I pray for twins. I pray for triplets. I pray that you will release the desire of our hearts in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. I want you to do something as a prophetic act really quickly and I'm going to sit down lift up your phone and lift up your wallet phone and wallet phone and wallet I want to pray for you and by the way when we've done this we've heard so many testimonies and miracles this is a prophetic act your phone deals with your connections your wallet deals with your finances And I'm praying to God over your connections right now. That God will favor you with important people. That there will be kingmakers and destiny helpers that will surround themselves around you. I also decree in Jesus' name a displacement of bad company. Anyone who is dragging you down or keeping you back, I command lots to disappear and go their way in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. I break ungodly and unhealthy soul ties right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I speak to finances. I talk to debts. I talk to credit. I talk to to mortgages. I speak right now in the name of Jesus in the office that you've given me to finances, Father, that have been trapped up or held back. There was a young girl in our school, just to give you a quick testimony, who took something uh, from my prayer altar and she she put her, her, her wallet there because she was going to be thrown out of school because her mom is a businesswoman and she wants wasn't able to make money. The next day, her mom got a contract for five million pounds. I believe God can do miracles supernaturally in the realm of finances where he can lift you up from Lodabar to sit in the palace of the king in a moment. So Father, right now I pray for an encounter in the realm of finances. I cancel supernaturally debts in Jesus' name. I release the wisdom for finance, the grace. You give us the power to prosper Lord let that be released over this room a new glory a new glory now in God the sign of maturity is when we praise before it's happened one person's getting it no 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 I mean praise like it's already happened How would you act if it already happened? If God did exactly what you needed him to. Come on, I need you to show the devil that he's already lost. Hallelujah.